the Small Business Show. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're enjoying the show, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. It truly does help the show. This week, I have the absolute pleasure of chatting with Alessandro DeRussio, founder and creator of the Growth Academy on YouTube. Alessandro, welcome, and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much, Laurie. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for the invite. Of course, I'm super excited to dive into your journey as an entrepreneur to see where you have gotten to today. But before we do, I want to rewind the clock just a bit. Let's go back way before entrepreneurship became a thought process. Let's go back to the days of, say, junior high or high school. Think about a time when, say, your parents or a mentor in school or even an aunt or an uncle asked you the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? What are you doing when you get older? What was your answer to that question? Well, it's a good question. I never thought to become an entrepreneur or create my own business because I didn't even know that, that was, there was a chance to do that. Right. If I think back in the days, I think that my first, the first thing, the two, only two things that I wanted to do when I was young was either to become a cartoonist or to become a director, because those were the two big passion of my life. I love to read comics and I love to watch movies. These were the only two passions, but I never realized that I could actually take one of my passions and make them become my actual career. I thought mm -hmm. that, you know, I grew up with this assumption that my job is something that I do to make a living. I don't need to like it. I don't need to be passionate about it. It's just something that would make me survive, right? To make some money for my life. So that's how I grew up. And I kept working in an industry that wasn't my industry. I wasn't passionate about for most of my life, for 15 years. I've been working, I've been pursuing a career that I didn't want to pursue. So I would say that when I was young, I, I, I had big dreams that I didn't realize. I'm not a cartoonist. I'm not a director, obviously. But then growing up, I, I just left my passions on the side because I thought, okay, I have to grow up, I have to be mature, and I have to find a job that will be my job for 30, 40 years because this is what, what, I, what I had in mind, what they told me to do. So I became an entrepreneur just recently in my life. I didn't have an idea that I could create a business, a company, an agency. I didn't have an idea that I can create something from scratch. And I could completely change my business. I didn't have any idea of that. So I stopped dreaming when I was really young. And then for the rest of my life, big part of my life, I just kept working in something that it was in my passion. I understand that wholly. And I think it's funny how a lot of people in our generation grew up with the generation before us who did have that position where they were in a career for 30, 40 years and, you know, retired with a pension and retirement plans and so forth and you look to that as you're growing up as the plan that's just what we know as we're growing up and I don't think we're really introduced to the concept of entrepreneurship in a formal manner that we growing up really could think about, not in the way that the, the, you know, the generations are being introduced to nowadays. I think technology has truly created the opportunities in a lot of areas for people to recognize that entrepreneurship is even an option. So what was it that made you recognize that entrepreneurship was an option? What was it that sparked that idea and that thought process for you? What you said is absolutely true. I think that my generation is the last generation that grew up without this possibility, this really clear possibility that you can create your own business or you can create your own career from mm -hmm. something that you like, that you enjoy doing. I mean, in my case, at least I grew up and my parents were an entrepreneurs. The majority of people that were surrounding me, they weren't entrepreneurs. We all grew up with the same concept that was find a job, keep your job until you will retire. And then when you retire, you will have time to enjoy your hobbies or enjoy your passions. This was the way I grew up, you know? So, but right now, as you said, it's completely different. Young, young people right now, they, 
No, they absolutely no. They have a lot of examples of people that create, created their own career, they created their own business, just doing something that they enjoy doing it. So right now it's a little different than when I was younger. It's funny, it looks like it's another word, completely different from the word I, I grew up. Anyway, I, I remember precisely when I realized that there was something else than what you do on a daily basis to make a living. Mm-hmm. I remember precisely the year. I remember that it was 20, 2012. I saw for the first time this online event mm-hmm. that the Lewis House was running on Creative Life. For the people who don't know who Lewis House is, right now he's pretty famous. He's, a, he's an entrepreneur. He has his own podcast. I think that his podcast is one of the most popular podcasts in the world. Uh, he's a be- exactly. Bestseller author. Now, he, he did a lot of things since 2012. But anyway, back at the, at the time, he was not famous at all. He was doing this event. He was running this event, online event, three days online event on Creative Life that is still a website as well, a website that is pretty famous right now, but not that famous at the time. I don't remember how I ended up on this show. I don't, I don't remember how, but I started watching the show and it was talking about, you know, all the things that right now we give for granted, like webinars and mm-hmm. uh, creating, growing your audience, getting visibility, growing your email list, all these things that were completely new to me. I didn't know anything about that. So I started watching the show and I was stuck at the screen. I couldn't stop. I watched all the three days that were going on with the show because that was something like I had this light bulb moment that I never had about business. I realized, my God, here, this guy is telling me, this guy and the other guys that were in the show, they is telling me that actually I can pick something, a passion, a hobby, something that, I'm, that I like to do. And I can create online a business around this specific topic. Mm -hmm. I know that it's weird to hear, but I never even realized that there was an option like that. Never, never realized that there was an option. And after that show, I started, you know, I got into the, the, that area of your life where you start getting a lot of information and you get online and you look for information, you look for answers, you start searching for all the possible information that you can find about creating an online business. And from that moment, I started learning about online marketing that still was completely new to me. I didn't know anything about that. So I started consuming information after information, you know, that that moment that you're really excited and you get all the knowledge that you can. And I started learning, I started learning. And after that, I created my first, I created, I started my first project and my first project was a website, I created this website where I was posting every week. I don't know if you, if it's still a big thing, but in 2012, 2013, infographics were a big thing. Like they were a big thing, they were everywhere, you know? And I started creating these infographics that were half infographics, half comics, and they were funny. And I started creating this, I created this website. I started posting all these funny infographics there and they got really popular. They got Mm. really, really, really popular. Many big figures in the industry in online marketing because I was creating this, this infographics and they were mainly on web design and graphic design and online marketing. And I, my infographics were shared by a lot of people, by a lot of people on their website. And I got a lot of traffic to my website. The problem is that I wasn't mature enough to understand how to monetize all this traffic. Mm. And I ended up with a website with a ton of traffic, a ton of traffic, and I didn't know what to do to monetize this, tra- mm. this traffic. Long story short, I realized that I wasn't doing anything. I was just spending a lot of time creating these infographics. I didn't know how to monetize all this time that I was investing there, and I stopped doing it. If I knew what I know right now, that would be my business because I would know exactly how to make it profitable right now. Back in the days, I didn't know anything. I was just trying things. I was trying things here and there and I did everything wrong and that business just disappeared like that. It was my first attempt. And after that, I took other attempts. It didn't work as well. And five years ago, at the end, I realized what I have to do. I realized I was mature enough to know what to do. And that's when I I started doing what I'm doing right now. 
it's when I started creating Escape 9 to 5. And now it's, it's established. It's my business. It's what I do on a daily basis. So it became my actual full-time job. I thank you for taking us through that evolution of how you got to where you are with the, the nine to five, because it's, it's almost as though you think that when you see someone's online business that's flourishing that, oh, they put up a website and they just built it out. And that's really not the journey at all for any of us, especially those of us who come into the online space, not realistically understanding the concept of online marketing sales, because it wasn't our initial plan. It wasn't our initial goal. And it was something that we ran into in some way, shape, or form. And it sparked an idea and a thought process. And that's when we go into that consumption mode that you were talking about. And then we get to a point where we have to look at ourselves and say, okay, and I've actually written a blog on this, but we have to stop consuming and start creating. Because <laughs> yeah. at that point in my journey, that's where I was. Just okay, I need to stop consuming all this information and create something with what I've learned. I need to start implementing and put it to practice. And much like you said, you know, okay, now I've put it to practice, but how do I monetize this stuff that I'm doing every day? It's really this evolution and it is for a lot of entrepreneurs. And a lot of entrepreneurs will get to those stopping points and stop. I really appreciate you pulling those pieces out because those are the pieces when you have to push forward, you guys, you have to keep yourself motivated. You have to be interested and passionate about what you're doing. Like Alessandro was saying, he found that passion and that's what drove him to push past the moments where, okay, he consumed and created. Then he had to figure out how to monetize. Then he started monetizing, but it was disorganized. And then he started figuring out, okay, I need to get this together the right way in order to move forward. Those are all, all stepping stones in the entrepreneurial journey that become hiccups that some people will feel as if they're failures. But one of the things that this audience already knows what I'm going to say, and my daughter can't stand me saying, there's no such thing as failure. There's only feedback. And you took every bit of feedback that you had on that journey and recognized, okay, this is where I need to pivot. This is what I need to do next. And you took that knowledge and you implemented it based off of the motivation that you had because you were passionate about what it was you were trying to bring to the market in general. I'd love for you to tell us what your thought process was at those points where you were going through those hiccups. What were you thinking about that made you, with that motivation, say, okay, next step? What was it that kept you moving? I think that what kept me moving was that I was finally doing something that I enjoyed. I was Just finally that. doing something that I enjoyed. Yeah. yeah, coming from my background, imagine I... As I said, I did for 15 years. I kept working for 15 years in an area, in a niche, in a market that I didn't enjoy. I was good. I was a designer. I became, I was a graphic designer, then a web designer, then a UX designer. So I made a career in this industry and I ended up with a pretty good job. I couldn't complain. I was making good money. I had a job that wasn't that tough. It was good. At the end, it was good. But the problem is that I didn't enjoy what I, what I used to do. Yeah. When you don't enjoy what you do, it doesn't matter how much you get paid. It doesn't matter if you have a secure position. All these things, they don't matter. They don't matter. It matter when you don't have money, when you don't have a job, when you're looking for a job, in that case, you need money. But when you are in a situation where you have financial stability, you're doing always the same thing every single day, you have to show up at this office where you don't want to be you have to be there for eight hours you have to commute to this place for two hours per day you know when you get to that lifestyle and you realize do i have to go on for 30 40 years like this okay. until i retire if you if right. you think like rationally about that then you start you know all the certainties that you have they start crumble because yeah. you say oh my god really this is my life this is the future my future 30 years I think that what kept me going was that finally I was doing something that I enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. the, the thing is that, you know, when you do something that you enjoy, you don't think at failures as failures. When you make a mistake, 
you're not gonna give up. When you when something is not working, you're not gonna give up. You're gonna try it. You're gonna start again. You give mm -hmm. up when you're not that certain of what you're doing, when you're not that passionate. But yeah. what I used to do, creating something that was actually mine and become my own boss, I realized that this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be flexible with my time. I wanted to do something that I was enjoying doing. I wanted to, you know, create my own career and not have to be in a place that someone decides for me or do something that someone else decides for me. I wanted to become my own boss and I wanted to be, I, have, I wanted to get back my freedom. I was doing something that I was enjoying doing. So when that first project collapsed and didn't work, instead of saying, I'm not good, good at this, I'm going to give up. I'm going to go back to my nine to five. And this is what I'm supposed to do. Instead of saying that, I said, okay, this didn't work. I did it wrong, but I want to try again. I want to try again. I, I, I was maybe sad for a couple of days. And then I said, okay, time to start again. I want to start again because I enjoyed that process, even if it didn't work at the end. So I started yeah. a new project and eventually that project didn't work again, failed again, but you always learn, you know, I learned from my first failure. I learned from the second failure, if you want to use the word failure, by the way, but I learned from the second time that didn't work. And then the reason why I have right now, my own business is because I learned from all those mistakes. I learned what I was supposed to do when I did my first website. I learned that actually you can get all the traffic you want because I was getting a lot of traffic. I was getting 20,000 visits per day because of all the shares that I had with that website. But, you know, I didn't know how to monetize. So mm -hmm. I said, okay, I know how to get traffic because that experience taught me something, taught me the fact that if you want to get traffic, you have to go to people who already have traffic and borrow their traffic. Mm -hmm. So I said, this experience told me that I can create a lot of content. I can create all the content I want, but if I don't put this content in front of people who already have an audience, my content will never get viral. So I have to get on what we're doing right now on a podcast or a show. I have to be interviewed. I have to make these people share my content. That's the only way to get traffic. That's what I learned. So mm -hmm. that first experience, it wasn't a failure. It didn't work but it taught me something and it taught me that I have to learn to monetize that traffic. The mm -hmm. second experience that I had, I made another mistake and it didn't work for a different mistake, but I learned something and I kept trying and trying and trying because I was enjoying the process. Mm -hmm. I didn't enjoy what it didn't work when it failed. I didn't like it obviously, but you know, after a couple of days that you are a little down, then you think, Oh my God, I've been down for two days, but this were four, months or six months that I really enjoyed creating what I was creating. So I try again. And that's what kept me going, kept me going. The fact that on a side, I had a nine to five that I didn't like, and I was cringing every time it was Monday morning, like, oh my God, Monday morning, I have to start another week. I, I didn't like it. On this other side, I was doing something that it wasn't working, but I was enjoying doing it. And you know, when you play, it, it's mostly like playing. When you do something that you enjoy, it's like you play. When you lose, if you play a game, if you play, you lose once, you're a little sad for a couple of days and then you play again because this is what you like to do. That's mm -hmm. why I kept going. I understand completely. It's funny that you said, you know, in terms of Mondays, it was something that you weren't looking forward to anymore. And I hope that one day through entrepreneurship, through spreading the thought process and doing what you're doing, we help to make Mondays an exciting space for the whole world. So, Alessandra, tell us about your awesome Mondays now. Tell us all about your current practice of leaving the nine to five and, and share where you are today with your journey. Definitely. Well, nowadays there are no awful Monday mornings for me, really. I, <laughs> I used to be really sad and really depressed when it was Sunday because I knew that a new week was starting. I was super depressed. Now I'm waking up in the morning and I'm looking forward to start working. I know that it's weird. I know that if someone told me that I was like this 10 years ago, if someone told me, look, you will wake up in the morning, you will be excited to start working. I wouldn't have believed that person, but it's happening. Now it's happening. I love it. I love to, when I wake up, I want to get out of the bed. I want to start working because I'm doing what I love. So my company is called Escape 95 because 
everything that I said so far, you should understand why I, I called my company Escape 95, because I want to help people that are in the same situation I used to be years ago. Okay. So what I'm doing right now is to teach you in case you don't like your job. I'm not saying that having a nine to five is bad. This is not the message that I want to convey there. I want to say that if you don't like your full-time job, if you do on a daily basis, something that you don't want to do, if you are in the same position I was, and you were thinking, oh my God, 30 years of this, 40 years of this, I don't want to live like this. Well, I want to show you that there is another, another possibility. There is another way. The other way is not going to be simple. It's not going to take a couple of days to become successful. It's not, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to promise miracles. You know, it okay. takes time. It takes effort. It's difficult. You know, it, it's, it's not the most, it's, the, it's not the simplest thing in the world. Otherwise everyone would be successful online, but still, I want to show you that there is another way. Now I've been working in this company. I created this company five years ago. And I work with a lot of clients, Love with a lot of clients. I created courses. I have a membership website. I grew my YouTube channel. I did a lot of things and everything I did in these years, this is the knowledge that I want to give to my students that I want to offer to my students. I'm going to tell them what I tell them is this, look, you can definitely do what I did by yourself. Mm -hmm. To me, it took me a long time to do it because as I said, I didn't know what I was doing. I made yeah. a lot of mistakes. I have to, I, I spend a lot of time figuring out what I had to do to become successful online. Mm -hmm. You can do everything by yourself. You're going to do the same journey that I, that I, you're going to go through the same journey that I took, or you can take a shortcut. A shortcut is to learn from a person who already did all the mistakes possible. Mm -hmm. If you work with me, I'm going to tell you exactly what to avoid. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do in order to get successful. If you want to create your own business and you want to work with clients, private, remote clients, and you want to become financially independent and flexible with your time, working wherever you want, whenever you want, with the clients you want. So this is my knowledge. This is my know-how that I grew with years. And this is what I do for my students. If anyone wants to learn how to get clients, if anyone wants to create their online business and make it successful, if they want to do the same thing that I'm doing right now and they want to reach the same level that I reached right now, I am able to teach you. I'm able to help you with that because every one of us, we need guidance. If we mm -hmm. have guidance, every time we want to learn something, everything is going to be simple. It's a problem when you don't have guidance or when you have too much information like today, mm -hmm. you have too much information and it's the same you know, it's bad when you don't have information and it's bad when you have too much information. When you don't yeah. have information, you're going to make a lot of mistakes and you have to learn by yourself. When you have too much information, you get overwhelmed, you get stuck, you don't know where to start, you don't have a strategy, you just have a lot of stuff in your mind, you don't know what to do. When you have a person who tells you, look, forget everything, I'm going to create a strategy for you. So this is what you have to do today, tomorrow this in three days this and then on and then on and on next week we're going to work on that and this person is going to keep you accountable that's when things are going to happen quickly quickly than normal like we in a in a in a faster way and in a simple way not struggling that much and not taking all the time that it took me so that's mm -hmm. the the kind of service that i offer to my clients nowadays you also have a YouTube channel that I had the chance to check out earlier, a couple of them. So guys, be sure to go over and check out his YouTube channels as well. I'll be sure to drop links in, in our show notes for both the show, as well as any of the podcasts that we have out there so that people can check it out. You have great resources. I love the presentation. So kudos to you for all that you have created and accomplished at this point. No, oh, thank you so much, Laurie. Really, I appreciate it. And I wanted to say that I, apart from my website and my YouTube channel, if anyone wants to go through the bootcamp that I opened a couple of weeks ago, I created this 10 day bootcamp where I try to condense everything or at least the entire strategy that I use to get clients nowadays. Mm -hmm. You can join that one as well. It's a 10 day, it's a 10 video bootcamp, 10 video program where I'm going to teach everything from A to Z. Like I'm not going to leave any stone and turn. It's not the kind of program that you join. And then at the end of the program, I'm going to pitch you something else. <laughs> I put all in there. It's all in there. Everything you're going to learn from me, all the entire strategy is in there. You can join, you can watch it, you can learn it. There is a community connected to it. 
If anyone wants to take a look at that, they have to go on the website escape925.life. If you get there on this, this URL, you're going to find the page for the 10 day bootcamp and you can join right now. Perfect. Well, I will be sure to include a link to the bootcamp as well. How long will you be running the bootcamp? This bootcamp is always open. It's always open. I don't know when I'm going to raise the price actually, because right now it's $37 to join. So it's super cheap, super affordable for everyone. I wanted to make it easy for everyone to join. I didn't want to, like, I'm going to keep the price down right now. But Excellent. people that work with me, they know that I'm predictable with these things because I keep working on my programs. It's not that I create something and it's going to be there for 10 years. Instead, mm -hmm. this is the second edition of the bootcamp because the first one that I created was around one year ago. But I keep working on the content. And there, if there is something that I need to update, I'm going to update it. I keep working on it and there is a community connected. So I'm always there giving advice all the time. And the community is incredibly alive. You, you, yes. you will be amazed. It's a small community so far, but it's incredible the engagement that is in there. I don't see that kind of engagement even with groups on Facebook groups with thousands and thousands of people. The reason is because the people in there, they want to reach the same goal. They want to get clients. They want to learn how to get clients and they push each other to be, the, to be the, their best version. So mm -hmm. it's working really well. The community is amazing. So since I'm always there every day to give advice and I keep working on the program, once in a while, I raise the prices on my boot camps and my programs. So mm -hmm. it's always going to be open. I hope in the future it's always <laughs> going to be open. But once in a while, I raise the price. So right now is the lowest price possible, $37 that you're going to find. Excellent. Well, this episode will be coming out very shortly. So hopefully that price will remain the same through the remainder of the month. But as we get this episode out there, if you had the ability to say, go back 10, 15 years and tell yourself just one thing, Alessandra, what do you think that would be? Well, big question. Okay. There are many things, actually. There are many, many things that I would say to my younger version. <laughs> I think that the first thing that I would say, among all the things that I would say, well, the, the, the thing that I would say first, can I say two things? Because two things are really important. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't find which one is better. I don't know which okay. one is the best one. But anyway, I'm going to say two. I'm going to break the rule. I'm going to say two. The first thing is, if you want to run a business, get rid of all the vanity metrics. Don't, I don't want you to be everywhere. You don't have to be on all the social media. I don't want you to have a big following. It's not about this. The first thing you have to focus on, the first and first and foremost, you have to focus on generating profit. Mm. I know that it sounds like I want you to make money. I have to make money. But if you have a business, you will realize pretty soon that you need money to invest. You need money to invest because you need to invest into tools. You need to invest into advertising. Maybe if you want to work on that, you have to make money. Otherwise your business is not gonna, it's not gonna survive. So if you want to start a business right now, if I will start a business right now from scratch, the first question that I will ask myself is, okay, this is the niche I found. How can I make it profitable? What should I do to make it profitable from the get-go? When I work with clients, this is what we work on at the beginning. We don't work on creating a website, creating a funnel. No, we start thinking about how to make it profitable. We need to make money from the get-go. This is the only way to make your business survive. When, if you stay mm -hmm. six months without making anything, mm -hmm. I assure you that your business will collapse. So you need to focus on how do I make it profitable? How can I monetize what I know? It's the mm -hmm. first mistake that I did, as I said previously. So this is number one. Stay away from all the vanity metrics. I don't want you to have a huge podcast, a huge YouTube channel, a lot of followers on social media. I don't want you to have all these things. First, let's think about how to generate revenue first. Second thing is connected to one, something that I already said, but it's really important as well. If you want, if you really want to mm -hmm. create a successful business, and if you think that this is going to be your future, like if you're really committed to make it work, do one thing, make money, as I said, and then use that money to hire a person who's going to tell you everything, everything this person knows, find guidance, find a mentor, find someone who can tell you exactly what to do and stop listening to everyone else. 
Uh -huh. If I say this, when I say this, I mean that you have to take, you have to gather all the information about the person you want to hire. Okay. Because, you know, every time I talk with the prospect, the majority of them, they told me I wasted so much money with a mentor and I didn't get anything out of this okay. person or out of this program. So take time to research. If you want to hire someone, you have to become a stalker of this person. You have to check everything this person has, websites, social media, how much, how or how many times he shows up and do things that he's supposed to do. Like take time, take a few months to realize if this person is the right person. Talk mm -hmm. with previous clients this person had. You want to be sure 100% that this is the person you want to follow. Mm -hmm. When you find it, when you're sure, invest your money in this person because we invest money everywhere, but we never invest for our education when it's about business. Instead, you should do it. Invest with the person you really trust and you're really sure about. Invest money and then put blinders on your eyes. Just look, just follow what this person says. Don't follow anything else. I don't want you to fall for any shiny objects or any other experts or any other coaches, nothing. Just follow this person religiously. And I assure you that if you find the right person, if you do everything that this person is going to tell you, you're going to succeed at the end. So these two things, first of all, focus on profit. Second, find a mentor, a mentor you really trust and invest in this person. This is what I would say to my younger self. Thank you. I don't think we've actually had a guest on either the podcast or the show yet who has stated, get monetized first. It's never been mentioned because people just don't think of it in that reverse concept because everybody's still, okay, what's the thought process? How do we get the name out there? How do we, what are we selling? What's the market? First of all, once you figure out, you know, who you're trying to sell to, figure out what it is you're going to be selling, whether it's your service or a product or a, a location, or you have to figure out how to generate the income because otherwise without it, there, there's absolutely no way for the business to survive. It becomes an extremely expensive hobby. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Just a hobby that costs you a lot of money you might enjoy a lot and that's all well and good but if you haven't figured out a way to monetize it that's all that it is so no i Absolutely. i really truly agree with you on on those thank you for those if you had any way right now and i'll admit escape the nine to five seems very well oiled so i'm not sure if you have an answer for this question but if you could wave a magic wand and change anything at all what would it be and why? How do you feel it would affect your practice? Actually, it's something that I'm already changing, but I, I would like to change it. So yeah, I will use this one to try to change myself because sometimes I think I'm the best person to do a lot of things. So the problem starts with me in my business. I think that I'm the best person to take care of many areas of my business. And most of the time it's not true. It's just me thinking that because I've done it for a long time, I think that I'm the best person to take care of everything. And it's really difficult for me to delegate some parts of my business that I, that I think I'm really good at. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you always need to realize that you're never the best person to do one thing. In every area of your life, you will never be the best. There will always be someone who is better than you in taking care of that part. So I will change myself because I really, I really struggled doing this kind of things. I really struggled to try to leave some place to, 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 to delegate some parts of the business that I think I'm good with. So there are some parts like I, I think I'm good teaching. I think that I'm good coaching to my students. I think that I really know how to do it because I went through what they, they're going through right now. I know exactly what, they, what they're talking about. I understand them. I know what they should do to to have results so i know that i'm good with that but i know that i have to delegate more than i'm doing right now delegate even more to other people because first i don't have to do it i don't have to do everything in my business mm -hmm. there are people that are better than me really i learn it how to do it there are people that really have this into their dna they're really good in coaching i had to learn it because i was never good I, it's something that i learned recently so i'm not I'm not, I, I had to learn it. I have to force myself to learn skills. I'm, I'm not good at selling. I had to learn it. I'm not, I wasn't good at coaching. I had to learn it. 
There are people that are natural with these things, yeah. way better than me. So I have to try to change myself and leave some parts of my business just be delegated and they have to be taken care of by people that are actually better than me in doing that. And my business can grow even even more and I can help more people in this way. So yeah, I will use the magic wand to, to change some part of my, my character. A lot of people are looking for an operational change in the practice, not necessarily a character change that they recognize as a necessity in order to grow. So I appreciate the clarity and the honesty there. Delegation is not something that's any, you know, easy for anybody. I think that is one of the bigger pieces that we as entrepreneurs struggle with across the board. I myself still struggle with it. You know, I do have team members, but I need more. <laughs> I need to delegate more. I need to get more off my plate. We all do. But it takes time. It, it definitely takes time. And I, I myself am definitely working on that same thing. So audience, if you guys can come up with some sort of dele delegation simplification tool for us so that our brains don't have to do it and you can just sort it out, we would love you. You have two buyers right here. Get on it. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree with you. I'm with you on this. I'm with you on this. Totally agree. <laughs> Oh, but definitely, Alessandro, it has been an absolute pleasure to chat with you this afternoon. I thank you so much for sharing your journey with us, for sharing your practice with us. Please share the best way for our audience to get in touch with you. Definitely. First of all, my pleasure. I really enjoyed the conversation and thank you again for the invite here. And if anyone wants to reach out to me, well, as I said, I think that the best way to to start knowing me and get in touch with me is to go either on escape95.life, that is the website that I just said, or get on my website, that is alessandrodirusho.com. I know that you're not going to be able to write it, but if you check, if you put the link on this interview, you're going to find my website. Or otherwise, you're going to find my YouTube channel as well. If you, if you search on YouTube, you search for my name or you search for Escape 95 Show, you're going to find it. So these are the three places where you can find me for sure. Excellent. Well, again, we will be sure to put links to the website, the YouTube channel, as well as the 10-day challenge. Um, Alessandra, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. No, thank you, Laurie. Thank you very much for the for the invite and it was it was a pleasure. Great conversation.